So recently I've sat down and rewatched the entire MCU, from Iron Man to the Avengers to Age of Ultron to Infinity War and all the kind of subpar movies and TV shows in between. Here's a definitive tier list. But absolutely none of those million dollar blockbuster movies sucker punched me in the face with more raw emotion <laughs> than Guardians of the Galaxy. A movie filled to the brim with so much style, colour, heart, complex characters and genuine funny moments that it cured my male pattern baldness and brought my dad back. Guardians just felt like a breath of fresh air after watching countless hours of the same grey formulaic superhero films to then get my retinas absolutely obliterated by this colourful explosion of comedy mixed in with pure sci-fi to create one delicious film. Although in saying that, I still really enjoyed other MCU films like Winter Soldier and Civil War. Plus it's always fun to see charismatic characters like Tony Stark pop up. Unless it's an Iron Man 2. You know, the question I get asked most often is, Tony, how do you go to the bathroom in the suit? Just like that. But Guardians just stood head and shoulders above the rest and remains one of my favourite superhero films. Up there with the likes of Spider-Man 3, Suicide Squad, 2016. I might have laughed if I remembered how. And of course. <laughs> so obviously when I heard a Guardians of the Galaxy game was coming out, I got a little hyped until I realized it was being published by Square Enix. Are you a madman? In fairness, as I'm writing the script, the game has just came out and it's getting some pretty good reviews. But the Avengers game gave me severe PTSD, so I'm just gonna stick with the Telltale one instead. Now for those of you that don't know who Telltale is, they're responsible for the Walking Dead game that made PewDiePie cry. <laughs> you know, the good one. Telltale is probably best known for creating episodic games with a heavy focus on their choice-based narratives. From being able to pick a variety of different dialogue options, you know, to having time choices that could either lead to you sharing a nice dance with your love interest, or just fucking backhanding them. Now Telltale was around for ages, producing tons of point and click adventure games like Jurassic Park, The Game, Back to the Future, The Game, and uh... Wallace and Gromit's Grand Adventure. Come on, Gromit! We've got to hide the body! Anyway, they really rose to prominence with the aforementioned Walking Dead game, which instantly got great reviews thrown right at it. This fantastic response ultimately meant Telltale got a shit ton of money, so in an effort to, you know, get more. Over the next couple years, they produced three more seasons of The Walking Dead with declining qualities of writing. You're now my least favourite song, Javier. The genuinely fantastic Wolf Among Us, Tales from the Borderlands, two seasons of their Batman game, and of course, this Guardians of the Galaxy game. Now, since Telltale specialised in building and complex relationships between characters, you'd think Guardians would work incredibly well with that formula in mind. Like, the whole dynamic here and in the films is that they're basically this massive dysfunctional family. No, no, you get out of here. They're tied together by the pain and trauma they've suffered throughout their lives, and being a part of the Guardians of the Galaxy gives these characters a way to share that pain, as well as giving them a sense of belonging, a sense of purpose, and a sense of, well, family. Excuse me for one moment. Straight off the bat, the game just throws you right into the ongoing chaos, introducing you to the main character of this game, Peter Quill, aka Star-Lord, aka not Chris Pratt, aka Mario. First, of course, is Mario. He will be played by Chris Pratt. He's so cool. Instantly, you're contacted by the Intergalactic Space Police in need of your help to take down the big purple man himself, Thanos. Gaming. You eventually agree to help them fight the Mad Titan, but only after you've gotten them to, uh, forget about some of your past crimes. Quickly, you get reacquainted with the other Guardians, Gamora, Rocket, and on-fire Groot, and of course, Dave Bautista. <gasps> you carefully track down Thanos to a nearby planet by, uh, following the trail of death into an ancient temple where you finally confront him in the most elegant way possible. Hey, you! Jackass! That all you got? This naturally leads to a civil discussion between you two, as you discuss why the critic from Ratatouille is actually the good guy. Damn! This is us! Okay, obviously a massive fight happens, with the whole team taking on Thanos to varying degrees of success, until eventually you, uh, fucking kill him. Yeah, the same guy that it took the Avengers 23 films over the course of 10 years to just barely defeat. Yeah, you just speedrun that shit here. This isn't a fake out or misdirect either, like he stays dead, which effectively destroys any expectations you had of what this game is going to be about. And with that being said, what the plot here actually centers around is this ancient artifact known as the Eternity Forge, which is basically like Monster Reborn, with the only difference being instead of bringing back Summoned Skull, you bring back Peter's dead mum. As the name suggests, this little plot device can bring anyone back from the dead, which means it's a pretty valuable I am to at least a few people. Naturally, this means for the rest of the game's runtime, the story focuses on the Guardians flying from planet to planet trying to figure out how the Forge works, as well as making sure it doesn't fall into the wrong hands. Which in this case would be Hala, the Accuser. She's, uh, blue. 
Hal is the main antagonist of this game because Rick Thanos and she needs the Forge to not only bring back her dead son but the entire Kree race so she can conquer the galaxy or whatever. Being nothing short of ruthless killing anyone that stands in her way, including Star-Lord. Don't worry though, Peter clutches it in the gulag and drops back in. The thing is though, while Hal is a completely serviceable villain, like she's fine, the Guardians have infinitely more compelling and intriguing villains to choose from, like this fine gentleman here, or uh, themselves. No! No! Like you've got a fuck ton of source material right in front of you lads, but instead we've just went with another blue person. I mean, can we not at least change the colour scheme up a bit? Again, Halle isn't an inherently awful villain, but in comparison to the Guardians who are actually somewhat complex characters that go through individual character arcs throughout the game, she just kind of fades into the background and comes across as pretty generic. Which in a universe filled with giant tree men, talking ducks and sentient Oscar statues, generic is the absolute last thing you want to have in this game. Besides Halle being about as fleshed out as a cardboard cutout, I will say Tales makes up for it by making you genuinely care about the rest of the Guardians with some really great and quite funny writing. Paula contacted me. She said this won't end until we're dead or she is. There's only one thing we can do. I'll get the cyanide pills. Oh, no, no, no. No, you cannot joke about that. Telltale is at its absolute strongest when it comes to building interesting characters and then creating compelling dynamics between you and them based on the different choices you make. And here, that couldn't be any more apparent as you're constantly having to juggle between your crewmates trying to keep everyone happy. Which isn't exactly easy when they all have drastically different wants and needs. Like, for example, how Gamora wants to reconnect with her sister, but Drax just wants to go to Burger King. The Guardians actually feel like real people, with the issues coming across as incredibly human. Which is a bit weird to say considering they're, uh, you know, aliens. Oh. Kimura naturally feels very conflicted after killing her only father figure, so wants to reach out and reconnect to the only family she has left in Nebula. Which proves to be a little difficult considering A, we just killed her dad, and B, she hates us. Oh. Drax is obviously pretty happy after getting revenge on the man that nuked his entire family. However, with killing Thanos being his only goal in life, he quickly struggles to find any sense of purpose for himself anymore. So he just comfort eats, which is the most relatable thing I've ever fucking seen. Rocket just kinda wants to leave the team entirely, giving the impression he doesn't want to leave everyone behind, but believes the Guardians have done everything they can to protect the galaxy. Raising the question that with Thanos six feet under, is there any need for the Guardians anymore? Groot is a tree, and as you play as Peter, your main focus is to try and keep the Guardians, or rather your family, from falling apart, which obviously is a bit of a struggle. So Super Mario in real life. The game does a fantastic job at making you invested in all these characters, and sure, they rely a little too heavily on emulating the films from time to time. That is most disturbing. But as a whole, Telltale allows each Guardian to go for a significant amount of character development from start to finish, facing issues that aren't these massive, overcomplicated, godlike problems, but rather they're just simple, yet feel real and relatable, making it easy for you to sympathise with them and put yourself in their shoes. <laughs> or pause. Because of this, Guardians of the Galaxy is at its absolute best when you're simply talking to characters or making split second decisions between them which you know for sure will bring one character closer to you yet push another one away. Like I could side with Rocket here, or I could be a simp. Overall, the characterization here is great, and a highlight for me was building up these unique relationships and seeing how they would progress based on the dumb decisions I would make. Oh, However, this is a Telltale game after all, which means of course there's a fuck ton of jank in it. Now, if creating well-written characters is Telltale's strong point, then gameplay is undoubtedly its weakest, which is a little problematic considering this is, um, it's a fucking video game. The actual gameplay can be summed up into two sections, that being walking around and quick time events which are always fantastic. Admittedly, while I don't find it incredibly engaging to slowly walk around these empty areas finding random shit that doesn't do anything, or having somewhat pointless conversations with other characters, You think Rocket's gonna be okay? I'm worried about him. I am Groot. I don't know what I expected. I do get this is a point and click adventure game, so complaining about that would be like saying Breaking Bad has too much meth in it. It's is meth. You violated the law. As for the quick time events though, they're integrated mostly into the action sequences and unsurprisingly make the combat unbearably awkward. Yeah. What is that? I mean, these fights are supposed to feel like epic sci-fi space battles, but the QTEs just make them feel really stilted and absolutely kills the pacing, grinding the game to a halt as it waits for you to press the next button while a Telltale employee holds a gun to your head. And yes, literally every other Telltale game has quick time events in it, but I feel like they don't rely on them nearly as heavily as this game does. Much like previous games as well, failing these QTEs can cause some unintentionally funny moments. Actually, to be fair, there's a lot of moments in this game that can be accidentally hilarious. I'm scared. 
There's also a lot of weird technical problems, like animations fully breaking, the lip syncing being about as good as the English dub for Squid Game. Hey, you just wondering if you got your photos printed? Logos printed. What? And I even completely broke the game at one point, being unable to progress or do anything, all because I made the brave decision to let a woman speak. The thing is though, you're not really playing a Telltale game for the complexities of its gameplay, which uh, makes that whole segment fucking pointless. You're playing it for the characters, and more importantly the story, which in this case is like 90% great and 10% uh, awful. Basically, the whole theme of this bright colourful superhero game revolves around death, or more accurately, how people deal with it, looking at the grief and pain it can cause, and how not being able to move on from death can consume you, like it eventually does to Hala. I will destroy you, and all that you love. <sighs> now as I've said, the Eternity Forge brings people back from the dead, but at a price of sacrificing someone else, with this whole concept becoming the big moral dilemma for the rest of the story. Through using the Eternity Forge, because magic or some shit, it allows you to dive into every Guardian's backstory and see how death has affected them, further developing characters like Drax, Rocket, and even Peter himself, as we're able to see the relationships and loved ones these characters have lost through flashbacks. These flashbacks, by the way, they're uh... Lila? They're kinda sad. This additional context makes deciding what to do with the forge excruciatingly difficult, because on one hand it can bring people back from the dead but at the cost of taking another life, and on the other hand if you destroy it, it's definitely the more responsible thing to do, but then you risk alienating Drax and Rocket who will never get the chance to see their loved ones again. It's moments and choices like this that makes this game's story so compelling. The stress it puts under you is admittedly unreal but it's supposed to be that way. These aren't easy decisions to make and the game knows that as it pushes you to do things that can compromise the precious relationships you've been building up from the start, and I fucking adore it for that reason. But then the ending ruins it. The game will be constantly changing depending on the decisions you make, you know, as it says at the start, and that's great because everyone gets a different experience from playing it. But then, regardless of all that, the game always ends the same way with the Guardians just having a drink. Like, you can be a massive dickhead to everyone from start to finish, and even cause mass genocide by killing an entire race of people, but the game will always end the same way, with you potentially bringing the character back from the dead, and then celebrating with your team, but like... I've just killed thousands of people, why is everyone so happy? In games like Heavy Rain and Detroit, there are multiple different endings which correlate with your actions. Sure, those games have their issues, but at the very least the ending I got felt justified because of my actions. I'm not saying this game hasn't earned a big emotional ending, cause it certainly has. But I fucking haven't. It just makes you feel like your choices don't actually matter, and in the long run, everything just ends the same. And it's this illusion of choice that really hurts the game for me. Oh, and before I forget, the game also ends with a cliffhanger, which we'll uh, never see because Telltale went to the Wolf of Wall Street school for business. Ultimately, Telltale's Guardians of the Galaxy is far from a perfect game, but it absolutely nails one thing. And that's the Guardians. It perfectly captures the tone of these misfit characters, blending in pure comedy with emotional trauma exceptionally well, and makes them feel like a genuine family. Not to mention, the soundtrack here is pure fire, but I can't play any of it cause UMG would repossess my house. I'm actually surprised nobody talks about this game now. Sure, the graphics are a bit iffy and it's got the usual jank Telltale's known for, but if you can somehow look past that, the game offers an incredibly authentic portrayal of the Guardians, with a story that's both super entertaining and honestly quite touching. But in saying that, big shooty space game's out now, so nobody's gonna be talking about this game apart from me and the two people that watch this video. Now if you'll excuse me, I've been recast by Chris Pratt.